Hello, I am Wander001, and this is my review of the Asus RTA68U. Uh, you might also find this particular router under the name Asus RTAC68R. The only difference between the U and the R are where you are purchasing this particular Wi-Fi router. If you're purchasing it online, it will end with a U. If you're in a retail store or a retail environment, it ends with an R. Other than that, there's no difference between the R and the U. It's the exact same model uh, Wi-Fi router. So you're probably considering this Wi-Fi router because you're looking to step up your current network. Uh, maybe you're future-proofing because this is an AC router, so that is the new wireless standard. It is also a dual-band router, being both 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz router, putting both those signals out at the same time. The AC1900 uh, rating that this particular Wi-Fi router gets is a little misleading in some ways. Uh, really what's happening is on the, the 802.11n or 2.4 gigahertz band, you're putting out a maximum output of 600 megabits per second. Uh, generally, you and I in a home environment aren't going to get anywhere near that but it's capable of doing that. And then on the 802.11ac standard, which is the five gigahertz standard, it's putting out 1300 megabits per second. So when you combine those two numbers together, that's where you come up with the 1900 uh, dual band gigabit router. So just throwing that out there right at the start so you know what you're actually looking at and getting into. You might also see this is a, 2014 version of this particular router. There is an older version than this that lays flat. Uh, that was the ASUS RT-AC6U. Again, U is online. There's a newer version of this, which they, again, went back to that lie flat uh, model, which I don't really like all too much but we'll get into that a little later when we start talking about the general specifications. Uh, so the newer model is the ASUS RTAC87U, and then there's the overkill model, which is really expensive right now, and you probably won't need, which is the, the ASUS RTAC2400, which is overkill, and it's, again, laying flat again with crazy amounts of uh, antennas, which you probably won't need. Even, even this one might be a little more than uh, your average user would need, but it's got a lot of extras that will make it worth getting if you're considering upgrading or future-proofing uh, your wireless network. So let's start off with the general specifications here, so some height uh, and so forth. Uh, we're looking at 8.6 inches in width with a height of 6.3 inches and a depth of 3.26 inches at the base here, which is the widest point. And because I like comparing things, here is what it replaced, which is my old Netgear. So there's a side-by-side -side for the width and just a general side-by-side -side for the length. So one of the big differences you're gonna notice with the old router that I just brought in and this new one here is this one has antennas and these are detachable antennas. This is the, the configuration that ASUS recommends for if you just have like a general uh, layout, they are completely customizable. So if I needed to, I could, you know, do something weird like that. So here's the thing, even after they screw in and you tighten them down, they are still movable and like you just saw that was a complete 360 degree spin they are still movable without actually hurting the antennas themselves so we're gonna bring this a little closer and what you're looking at here on the front and this is again the orientation which it is in by default is the standing position it has this interesting textured front plastic it's a matte finish so it doesn't actually collect fingerprints at all which is really nice and then up here again this is plastic, but it's got like this almost brush metal finish, as well as your indicator lights on the front. You know, is the you know internet on? Is it outputting 2.4 gigahertz? Is it outputting the five gigahertz? Really on the sides, there's not all too much to look at. Here, this side is completely empty. If we spin it around this way, which might be a little difficult to make out on camera, I'm trying to see if it's actually showing up. 
but there are two buttons. One is your WEPS button, which will allow you to, without having to put in, uh, you know, in my case, 34 character password to access my Wi-Fi. And down here you have the Wi-Fi on and off switch. Now that's Wi-Fi, not the actual router. So you can still have the router running and anything that's plugged in directly to the Wi-Fi router will still be able to access the internet while it turns off the Wi-Fi antennas. Now, if you do that, you're gonna save yourself a little electricity because when you turn off the Wi-Fi antennas, uh, it's only gonna use 5.9 watts of electricity if you have the antennas on and it's outputting both the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, it goes up to about 9.1. Again, not terrible. The, uh, the brick that comes with this is not really, really big. It does also come with an ethernet cable, which is really nice. I had a Cat6 lying around, so I didn't really use the one that came with this. So we're gonna bring it close again to show you the back. And what we're looking at on the back here, you've got your on off button, which is really small and, and feels a little chintzy to me. I don't know, it doesn't feel as solid as the rest of the device. Just under that, you have your DC power input. Now it is an L connector, so it's not the straight plug, it is an L plug. Just keep that in mind with uh, when you're setting this up. Here you have your USB 2.0 and your USB 3.0 port, which allows you to both have a network printer as well as a network drive. So you can roll your own network space without having to actually get yourself a server. Here you've got your dedicated WAN port. In the middle here, you have a button. This button turns off the LEDs. So when I say LEDs, you'll notice it has this ASUS logo right here. Well, that lights up white. And in some cases could be a little annoying depending on where you have this. It also, all the indicators on the front, they are also LEDs. Just showing what the LED front lights on the ASUS look like. Uh, you can see they are rather bright blue. The white light that you're seeing in the back there is not actually because of the white LED ASUS logo, but rather two external hard drives that I have plugged in in the back. So clicking that button turns everything off. I wish it was a two-stage button so that I could just turn off the ASUS logo in the back here and still have the lights on the front so I know what's going on, but it's not. It's in one, one button kills everything. Moving across to the other side here, you do have for LAN ports. Now this is where paying the little extra money for this could prove beneficial. Depending on the type of user you are, you can change one of these LAN ports to be an extra WAN port, either for load balancing or a fail safe should one of your network connections go down. Now again, the average user, that might be a little overkill, but if you, if you need to be online because, well, maybe you run a home business and you need to have that uptime, it's a nice option to have. If we notice right here, this is perforated and this is where it's ventilated through. This is a large heat sink. Up top, it also has the heat sink. There might be visible the metal strip going across the top there. With this particular setup, and this is why I chose this one over the previous model, which was slightly cheaper, not quite as fast, but slightly cheaper. It's, I like this standing position. It helps to keep the, the Wi-Fi router cooler than if it was laying down and only had a little bit of ports here or here to ventilate. So using this configuration, you get maximum heat offset. Now, it's not gonna be great for everybody because maybe you don't want a Wi-Fi router that stands up like this. Maybe you want something that lays flat, kind of hides itself. Well, that's just something you're gonna have to consider. All in all, I mean, if you look at it, it's not a terrible looking router, so it's not going to detract from your decor too much. Yes, the antennas are a little weird, but you know, it's the way that Wi-Fi routers are going back to. They're realizing that you get a better signal strength and more directional with antennas. Now, flipping it over to the bottom, you will notice that it does have two rubber strips. You will also notice that there are no mounts for wall mounting. So this is not a wall mountable device. It is something that's gonna sit on a flat surface and that is it. It's where you put it is where it's gonna stay. One of the questions I asked myself when upgrading to this particular router over my old Netgear was, what do I need this to do? And one of the main things was I needed gigabit ports right here. The other one was only one 100s. Uh, so that was a, a primary thing that I needed. I also needed the dual band. So I needed that five gigahertz spectrum because I live in an apartment complex and the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is full. It's really choked up. This also has some technologies, which I'll show you a little bit later uh, when I show you the web UI that, you know, lets you configure this to do crazy things if you just take the time to go through some menus. But right off the bat, 
One of the options that this has is called AI Radar. And what that does is it does beam forming and say you have your computer over in the living room and another computer in your bedroom. Well, instead of just sending out the signal all around, it kind of forms the beams to the locations of the devices to help keep a stable internet connection to those devices instead of just sending everything out there, which is something that I really thought would be useful. And in fact has been. It does uh, hold a network connection much better than my other one did. Uh, but again, that was partially because it was getting choked out. What I'm gonna do now is show you some signal strengths uh, for different locations in my house, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at signal strength wise with this. So what you're looking at right now is a tool called Wi-Fi Analyzer that I have on my phone. These are snapshots that I took for range testing of the new ASUS router. Here you can see Foamy is my access point in red, and you can see the signal strength in the living room. So that's about five feet away from the actual Wi-Fi router. And if we tap over here, here's the signal strength for the five gigahertz. Again, in the living room, pretty much right on top of the Wi-Fi router. You would expect these signal strengths to be very good, but you can also see the vast amount of other access points that are by me. So what we're gonna do now is come down to the snapshot for the bedroom, which is the furthest point in my condo, which is about 1200 square feet. So this is past an electrical box, very, very far corner of my condo. Now the Wi-Fi router itself is not situated in the direct center of my condo. It's in the living room, which is actually closer to the front of my unit. So here's Foamy again. You can see that in the back, it picks up even more access points because there are several other Wi-Fi routers that I can pick up back there from the other building. If we come over to the five gigahertz, you will notice that the strength has gone down and there are other access points operating on five gigahertz, but this is still a good signal strength to have because you can still pick it up and still do what you need to do. Now, the last bit that I tested was in the basement. Now, I do not expect to have a signal strength down here. So here, again, 2.4 gigahertz, all the other access points are, are all low, but you can still see Foamy's peaked out there. So he's still the strongest in the area, which is good. Uh, when you, when I first started it, you did see five gigahertz. I pretty much got nothing. Now, even with signal strength being good, it's not a good Wi-Fi router if you can't get decent speeds out of it. So to give you an idea of the speeds that you could get, depending on your ISP, remember ISP and location are a big factor of how well you're going to see uh, results. Uh, so here are results of speed tests that I ran for this particular router in similar circumstances to what I ran when I was speed testing my old Netgear router. So you saw there that the network signal strength and speed test were, at least if you went back and looked at the Netgear, uh, are a vast improvement for myself. It also you know, gave me access to that five gigahertz band, which is what I wanted. You saw that it's not that busy uh, in the 500 gigahertz uh, spectrum. So if you live in an apartment complex like I do, you might want to consider this router just for that because not everybody's gonna be on that spectrum. Uh, okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the web user interface for this, just to give you an idea of all the options that you have at your disposal when setting this router up, when configuring this router, and when you know making it more customized to your specific needs and wants. Here we're looking at the web UI when you first log into the ASUS router. Currently we are on, under general settings, network mapping. Here you can see your connect status and your WAN IP address. I'm not going to click on that because that will bring up some extra information here on the right hand side which is sensitive. But right now we're under this area here which is for your wireless and you can see the security level as well as you could also select system status for 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spectrum to see what they're doing. Obviously I'm not going to be doing that because again sensitive information would be revealed. 
if we look here, you can see both the cores on the router and see what they're up to and how they're performing, as well as a little status chart here. Currently, I'm not doing anything taxing with the computer on the network, so you're not going to see a lot of movement here. You also see a chart for the RAM usage and what's happening there. If we scroll down a little bit here, you can see that from this point, it branches off into two areas. You have your clients that are attached to your network and the USB ports on the router. I do have two hard drives plugged in at the moment. One is in the 3.0 port and the other is in the 2.0 port. I have dismounted the one in the 3.0 port so that you can see what that will look like when you dismount a drive. If you have it plugged in and not dismounted, you get a little status indicator here that shows how much drive space is actually left. If you click on one of the drives, it will give you more. Again, this right panel is always going to be for extra information. Model name, available space, total space. And then you have these other options here, media server, uh, this wizard, and how to safely remove the disk. So this is how you unmount the drive. You click on that, and it will unmount the drive. These two other options bring you over to this right here which is a USB application. So if you click on these, we'll just click on the media server quickly, it brings you right into an application for media sharing. Now I'm going to go back, and again, the same would be with this wizard here, brings you directly into these USB applications that you can run. If you click on health scan, this will allow you to scan any attached drives for health because these are network attached drives. The one thing that I found with the network attached drives, when you are looking them up on the network, it groups it groups them into a single uh, usable storage space. So I can't differentiate the 3.0 from the 2.0 unless you have a specific folder called this drive information, this drive information. If not, it just looks like a giant storage of information but you can scan them for health and make sure that everything on the drive is working okay. You can also set up a frequency if you wanted to. So we're going to come over here and click on clients. And when you first click on clients, it will show you all clients that are online. Uh, I dropped it into the wired client only because I don't want the wireless client uh, IP addresses and MAC addresses getting out here. This is just a IP address for my Roku, so I don't really care about that too much. Uh, one of the benefits to seeing this is you get a complete list of everything that's working on your network, so it's good to know who's connecting, what's connecting, and if you needed to blacklist some. You also have the option of, not with this particular one, but I do have a, a D-Link wireless camera, and if I just clicked on the IP address of the D-Link wireless camera, it would allow me to access the wireless camera's UI right from this particular UI. So that's what we're looking at on the front page here. Now we're going to start going down the side menu to show you the different options that you can go through. Next up is our guest network. You can have a total of six guest networks, either on the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz spectrum. So you can, you can really limit what's going on or, you know, who has access to what based on each individual guest network. Or, you know, I, I don't know if you want to do that because you would choke quite a bit of the actual usable airspace if you were broadcasting that many networks. Next we're going to move down to this AI protection. Now these are options for the uh, the router that are offered through Trend Micro. You will have to agree to a Trend Micro uh, EULA and if you don't want to, well, you don't have to. You just don't get access to these particular things. Now for the purposes of the review, I did agree to the EULA. Even though I don't really use these, I figured it would be beneficial to show you what they are and really what they are, just think of it as programs that live on the router itself to do specific things. So if you have like antivirus or firewalls on your computer, this is like an extra layer on top of that. So here you can see this first one is scan for vulnerabilities on your router. Then you have malicious site blocking where you can make restrictions. You can check for vulnerability and protection, which will, you know, resolve common exploits. I mean, you can read it right there, resolve common exploits with the router. And this one down here will prevent infected devices from connecting to the router and your network. And if we go back here, you have your parental controls, which are accessible also on these two tabs. So I didn't have to go back. I could have just clicked on a tab at the top. I mean, it's rather nice that they do have these timed interfaces. 
So here you can see also you have either a web and app filter or you can set up a time schedule. So if you have specific days and times that you want somebody to have access to the network, you can set that up here. You do have to turn it on. And then here you get some extra little bits of information. One of them is setting up which client you want this to happen to. And that that's the beauty of this. You can limit it to a particular item rather, I'm sorry, a particular MAC address or a client. So especially with this one, the web and app filters, let's say you don't want Suzy streaming entertainment. Well, you just make sure that you choose Suzy over here and say streaming entertainment. And that will prevent just Suzy from streaming entertainment or, you know, going nuts on file sharing sites. Uh, this way, you can still go nuts and download your, you know, whatever torrent you want. And you will not be restricted, but Suzy will be. Again, you do have to agree to a Trend Micro EULA before you have access to that. So just keep in mind if you really do want access to those types of items. We're going to move over here to Adaptive QoS. And this is just going to show you kind of what's going on. Here you can see the items that are attached to my network at the moment. So here's that camera I was telling you about, my phone, a laptop. And this one is actually the Roku. I don't know why it's got this weird icon here instead of something more... Uh, you know, media set top type thing instead of a laptop because it's not a laptop. If we come up to the tab here, QoS, this will allow you to do bandwidth controls. I don't really play with this because I don't have any problems with bandwidth at the moment, but this will allow you to prioritize certain types of traffic. Web history has been non-existent for me. I'm not entirely sure why this does not work. I've checked it with my, my computer, my wife's computer, my cell phone, and anybody else's cell phone who comes in here. It does not show me a web history, so that's a little disconcerting, but I don't really care what people are doing. Last is this traffic monitoring area, and here we can see in real time the WAM port, what's happening, the wireless for 2.4 gigahertz, as well as the 5 gigahertz. Right now, my computer is sitting on the 5 gigahertz spectrum, which is why I'm seeing that little spike there. If we come up to the right, we can change it from real time to the last 24 hours or this daily. Daily is what I used back when I had my old Wi-Fi router. And this is one thing that the ASUS does not do well in my opinion. Notice there's only two days listed here. Now I've had this router for, you know, about six months now. But whenever you turn the router off, this all disappears. Unlike my previous Wi-Fi router, which kept it in like memory on the device once you cut the power it this disappears so you don't actually get a running total unless you leave your wi-fi router on all the time i generally do not because i turn it off to save electricity at night when i'm not using it coming over to usb applications this is what we are being brought into uh, when i was clicking on the attached areas when we got to that landing page with the hard drives so here you just have like all the extra options that you can do if you had attached media devices uh, I don't use this currently, so I can't give you too much insight into that. Likewise with the AI Cloud, these are other options which I currently do not use, but will allow you to pretty much access your local area storage with, you know, when you're not in your residence, so you could be elsewhere and still access it. So th this is like the cheap and easy way of having like a server. So instead of buying a big server, you just plug and play two uh, hard drives. You can have reasonably large hard drives and access them elsewhere. So getting down into the advanced settings, we're going to click on wireless here, and I'm going to skip all the way to professional because so much sensitive information is visible uh, on these other screens. But I brought you to the professional, even though you might not think you need this, but we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And this TX power adjustment. What this is, is how strong the signal strength is that's coming off of your Wi-Fi router. Now, again, I live in an apartment complex, and there are a lot of other uh, Wi-Fi access points. And it's primarily the reason I got rid of the old Wi-Fi router I had, is it was just getting choked out by everything else that was here. So with this, you have the ability to up the transmission power of your Wi-Fi. So right now, I'm operating at 100%, which is good because I'm not choking out the other uh, Wi-Fi access points, but I'm, I'm giving myself a fighting chance. Now, if you don't live 
in a situation where you need full signal strength, you can pull this back and it will lower the transmission strength and also save you a little bit of power. Now I have skipped down to the VPN option only because LAN and WAN areas give way too much information, but these are just general ways that you can set up if you know what you're doing uh, a little more customized for both the LAN and WAN. And here you have your IPv6. So when we do run out of IPv5 addresses, you know that you're going to be good for IPv6. So VPN is just that. You can set up your own virtual private network using this Wi-Fi router. I have not done it as of yet, but this is where you would do it. You'd click on this tab. Moving down to firewall. Again, this is a firewall on top of anything that you have on your computer. So this is a firewall for your network as an entire network as opposed to just a single uh, client on the network. So this is, again, something you don't necessarily need to use, but if you're going that extra mile, you, you can come in here and configure the firewall as you want. Coming down to administration, it's just that. It's the administration of your Wi-Fi router. Currently, you know, we're on this operation mode. It's just on default, which is it's a wireless router. You can set it up to be a repeater, an access point mode, or a media uh, bridge system firmware upgrades you can check there and restore factory save all that fun happy stuff you probably won't come to this because a lot of these options you can get from the network mapping area which shows you a lot of the general uh, information system logs i'm not going to show you personal information there but it will give you like a txt file of all of the happenings that have been going on with your uh, router and the network itself last but not least you have your networking tools here and again this is not generally going to be used by you know the layman but uh, here's where you can run your network analyst you can run a ping test trace route you can come over here and do your wake on LAN again general people you're not going to be using this but it's nice that they threw these in there for more advanced users like I said everything that you're pretty much going to do is going to be accessible from the network map area uh, again this also shows up in the upper right because I did skip this shows you that there's things plugged into the USB, shows you that you're connected via the internet, there are no guest networks, and you do not have a printer. Now, I'm sorry, I do not have a printer at my home, so I could not test how well the printer works with this router. But that's just a quick look. So again, speed, range, and the user interface being pretty easy and you know simple to navigate, make this a very nice Wi-Fi router if you're thinking about upgrading. So really the next thing is, well, what's the price? Depending on where you get it, again, direct from ASUS, it's gonna be like $200. If you get it off of Amazon, you're looking anywhere from 180 to 175. Now that might be more than you're looking to spend for a Wi-Fi router, but think of it this way, it is a dual band, so 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz spectrum AC. So that AC is going to future-proof you because while you might not have anything in your home right now that runs AC, in the future, it will be more common to see things with the AC standard. Just like a few years ago, wireless N was not a, a standard. Now it's everything has you know 2.4 gigahertz on the N spectrum. So with that in mind, I really like the upgrade. It hasn't really given me, well, it hasn't given me any issues. I know some people are kind of iffy on ASUS products. They'll either, you know, they'll either tell you they love them or they hate them. Uh, real world experience for me, I'm not a fanboy. This Wi-Fi router was a little more than I was thinking I wanted to spend on a Wi-Fi router, but I've been very happy with it and I'm, I'm glad that I did. Uh, I've seen improvements in my network. So if you're considering this, hopefully you found some portion of this video helpful in making your decision. Uh, I have been Wanderer001 and thanks for watching.